Hello, I'm Paul. I'm Adam. And I'm Benjamin. And welcome to, to Film Busters. <laughs> so funny, isn't it? That was funny. It was really funny. Film Busters. Happy New Year. It's 2019. It's the first Film Busters podcast of the year. Yes, it is. This is very exciting to be doing the first one of January 19, isn't it, Adam? Yeah. yeah. It's so much enthusiasm. So it's much. Changed. Well, one thing that hasn't changed is Adam's enthusiasm for this podcast. He's got the, the low volume level. Me and Paul got the high volume mm. level, as you'll hear now. Yes. Hello. My name's Paul. Hello. High my name's, volume level. My name's Ben. My Hello, I'm Adam. And there's Adam's. Right. So today is very special because we're actually together today. We normally record in separately. We're all covered But right today now. we are actually all together on Adam's bed. And I'm the only one with clothes on. I don't know why these two have not all clothes on. Yes, very strange. Yeah, Adam's all the clothes off. <laughs> And we're all at Adam's house. It's very nice. We've had a nice time. And we've watched a lovely film that we're going to review for you. Well, enough about that for now. Well, just linking us up. Who is the link in? No. You so, always shoot me down when I do my good links. Adam's done some good linkage there. <laughs> but uh, we're going to hand back over to the, to the person who hosts this podcast. And this is our host. Right, so for people who listened to the last podcast, the 2018 Roundup, we um, finished the year off with our lovely quiz. And it seems like I won, so this year cheated. I'm the host once again. How do you feel about that, guys? Cheated. Adam feels very cheated because he came quite last. Yes. Only by like two points. He had no chance. It wasn't two points, it was several. <laughs> it was two. <laughs> I was one point behind. I had a chance to win. And then Adam threw in a question that was possibly the best question we had all year because it actually stumped both of it us. It did. And it was quite an easy question as well. Yes. That you both should have known. And, yes. And, and in the end of the day, Paul knew it. And so he's quiz master for 2019. I'm the champion. Again. And let's see how we can cheat this year. <laughs> so it's all square. Right, all scores are back to zero. So the way we play this game is I ask Adam and Ben two questions. If they get it right, they get a point. If they get it wrong, I get the point. So we're all square on zero. Should we ask these questions? We should ask them, but we should also say it's very easy for Paul to get the points because he doesn't have to do anything. And also he can pick the hard questions <laughs> and we don't get the points. Paul wins by doing fuck all. That's how he wins. <laughs> it's like his life. He relies on mine and Adam's lack of knowledge, but that is significant. <laughs> <laughs> that is significant. <laughs> right, should we go to the first question? Are you ready? Yes. Please, let's do. Here we go. In 1995... What was Pierce Brosnan's first James Bond movie? Goldeneye. Correct. Ben's got one point. It's the only one I know. It's the only (laughs) fucking Pierce Brosnan film I know. It's the only one. Adam's too tired. I was going to say Live and Let Die. That's your Live and Let Die? No. The Die Another Day, that's the other one, isn't it? Yeah. Die Another Day, yeah. yeah. Yes. That's what I was going to say. What's the one where he says, uh, give me a a, a car (laughs) and uh, and, a... limo for my friend with expensive acne and there's a Chinaman who's very bored. Die Another Day. Yeah. Yeah. My friend with expensive acne. I thought that was a good line because he had diamonds all in his face. Yeah. And he said, my friend with expensive acne. It's the only thing I remember from... Worst Ben's brother's one. I thought it was fine. <laughs> Halle Berry. So, Ben's got one point. Should we go straight to the next question? Might as well. What else are we going to do? On the back foot. I'm winning for the first time in six months. Yes, you are in the lead, Ben. Come Best on. time ever. Fire it. Let's was... see what happens with this one. What macho actor has a real first name of Walter? Bruce Willis. Yes! Well done! Oh, right. I never knew that. I was thinking in my head, I thought I've heard that before. How'd you know that? I've heard that before. And I'm just thinking in my head who it could be. I was going to say Arnie, but Bruce Willis in the end. That was great knowledge. So his well name's done, Walter Adam. Willis? Must be. Who Maybe his middle name's Bruce. That's why I changed it. Bruce is more manly than yeah, Walter Willis. Definitely. Walter Willis. <laughs> Well, very good. Well done to the boys. Big willy willy. I'm actually losing. Great. Well done. Good work, Adam. Terrible work. Good way to start the year. Great. Start as we mean no to go No more cheating. On. It's because we're with him now. We can't cheat. That's true. We're with him in person, so he can't uh, fake the questions. He can't, he can't <laughs> I don't know how fake I don't know how he fakes them. <laughs> Do you see, well, as, as listeners to this podcast, you would understand that the reason that Paul wins is because in between podcasts, he gets to look at about 20 questions. And in those 20 questions, the only way that he can benefit is by making sure that we don't. So he picks the two hardest questions out of 20. They yeah. never do. Always. Right, so we go to the main event. What is it? Main the main event. Main. We are talking about the house that Jack built. Let's go into the theme tune. The main event. The main event. Oh, you're top juice. The main event. Here is our theme 
Future topic. Trust Adam might do a rubbish plot summary. Fashion serious. We are talking about the house that Jack built. From now on, will be spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, please turn it off now. But if you have, you might as well listen to us. We're going to ruin it. it for you. Yes. So Adam, would you like to explain the plot of the house that Jack built? Um, I have no idea, and I'm not even sure he does as well. I don't think anyone knows the plot of this film. Just try. Yeah, there was a couple a of murders, but that was it. There's the five murders. And they also taught me many lessons about how to make dessert wine and how to shoot a deer and about dictatorship. It did indeed. That's but apart from that, I don't really know what happened. Well, we're here to discuss it. Yes, we're going to break it down we'll and break try and down. break the film down as easy to dissolve in your mouth as possible, Adam. <laughs> Okay, and you can maybe build me a house in the process. Yes, yes, the house that Paul built. As we normally do, shall we go straight in and do our ratings with a little bit of... Yes, and let's qualify it first by saying that we've literally finished watching it about half an hour ago. It's very fresh. It's very fresh in our mind, where normally we have a little bit of time to think about it, so we're probably all a little rattled and still trying to work out what we what we score it. But I will start and go with my star rating, which instinctively is 7 out of 10 for this film. Seven out of ten. Okay. Very good. I would give it a six. Fair enough. I think I'll probably go over six. A six for from Paul as well. I thought he was gonna give it an eight. No. I thought you I'm gonna give it a six. You were completely wrong, weren't you? I was. You were trying you were trying to guess. I was trying to predict your score and I was sure it'd be an eight or a nine, but there you go. I loved it and I hated it all at the same time. Yes, I I kind of agree. So when I was watching this film, I was pretty into it about the first quarter. So yeah, when it got to about the second incident, that was probably my favourite segment of the actual film. So that's when I realised that I shouldn't be taking this film too seriously because it wasn't taking itself too seriously. There was a bit of comedy. And then from the second incident, I realised that the first incident wasn't as bad as I thought it was. But then from then on, it was just so messy. It was messy before then. I don't know what to make of this film. Uh, It was messy from the beginning. I, you'd have to watch it to find out. <laughs> and that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> Just watch it to find out. Now, when we started watching this, I think we all thought it was going to be a bit of a serious, bloody, gruesome, dark film. Yeah. And it opens up with that first incident, which is pretty fucking stupid. Yeah. With Uma Thurman being annoying as fuck. And we're all like, why the fuck would you be talking like this? This is stupid. And he's doing some stupid shit and saying Jack about 30 times. And then, yeah, the second incident comes along and you're like, okay, actually, this film's fucking very aware of itself. It was aware of itself. Yeah, that's that's I think it was fucking yeah. aware of itself. And that's where it was like, the whole time watching it, it was kind of like trying to evaluate it. Like, is this trying to poke fun at itself the whole fucking time? Or is it trying to be edgy? Because Von Trier does much darker shit than this. Mm. And this was very tame for him. It was so tame. They were shying away from, from the gore most of the time. Like, they... I think they could have got a higher rating for me if they literally showed everything, the brutality of it, showed all the gruesome scenes and did it for what it was because most of it, you're, what, you're listening to him talk to someone for ages about something you didn't care about, just waiting for the gruesome part to happen and then they'd shy away from it and not show it. And it's like, so what is the point of me listening to all this jibber-jabber? <laughs> Good your <laughs> jibber-jabber, Jack. <laughs> and then not actually show... The conclusion we wanted. What can, what did you want to happen at the end? When you're watching this all the way through, what did you want? What did you guys hope would happen at the end? Well, okay, so you're watching a film about a serial killer. You want to see him doing some killing, slicing and dicing. Yeah, uh, graphically. But, yeah, graphically. Yeah. Especially for especially when you're going in into a Lars von Trier film, which you know after watching coming out the back of Antichrist. Yes. And and Nymphomania, you know that he does not shy away from from the graphic parts of his film. Yes. He just he's he's bold and he likes to show it because he's not scared of doing that. But this film is just like, are you trying to make this film more of a mainstream audience? Yeah. Are you trying to tame it down a bit so more people watch your film? What are you trying to do? Because this is a perfect film to show the graphic nature of what you want to portray. Yeah. If anything was going to be graphic, of all his back catalogue, I thought this would be the film about a fucking serial killer. Especially when you know that it's coming at this time in his career, where you know that he's fucking, uh, he likes to provoke people with his films and the whole Me Too movement. He decides 
to rein it in. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, his, his Jack is killing women for the most part. But then every time it feels like he could really fucking provoke and push things, he shies away from it. Like, there's a scene where he, he draws with a marker pen around a woman's breast and then takes a knife to them. And then you don't see him slicing through the breast, almost like, oh, that's too shocking. But in Antichrist, we see fucking Charlotte Gainsborough use a pair of scissors and she slips, a cl- slips the clitoris off <laughs> on the camera. So how do you go from snipping clitoris off to, yes, to showing I nothing? I know. And were you were hoping for snip clitoris? I was not hoping for that, no. You said it to me before the film started. <laughs> I hope there's many clitoris in this film. <laughs> I just don't know what this film was. It was just a... A pile of <laughs> randomness. He was very confused. I am very confused. I don't know. And then at the end, it gets even more confusing and Hitler turns up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck me, man. The ending was quite a thing. Yeah, it was. A... And it went on for about an hour too long. It was quite a road coaster. Maybe the best way to break this film down yeah. is to break it into its individual parts. Yes. And then try and work it out from there. Let's do it. Let's go. Incident one. Analyse it. The Uma Thurman story. They just mentioned the word Jack over and over and over again. Yeah, it was quite annoying. But then straight away, like looking back on it, it's like immediately that should have been the flag that, okay, this film is fucking aware of itself. Because that's the, that's the key oh. to the film is how aware of itself it is. We heard that people were walking out of the cinema because this film was too gory. Yeah. All yeah. of that. And I've seen much more gory stuff in other films. Adam said, not a lot even head- hereditary when the fucking girl gets her head taken off by that car. Yeah, that's more. That was more shocking. Even in, Halloween in when he chokes the kid out. Yeah. Other films we have done. Yeah. That and this. Is a- the one. Adam said when we were watching the film, what was that film that you guys watched? Actually, the last time we were face to face, which was uh, Devil's Rejects, and yeah. Devil's Rejects is more 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 brutal and more like, oh shit, did they really show that? Yeah. Than this was. And everyone walked out of the cinema when I saw that. So I'll tell you. Yes. Everyone walked Very out. good film. Very good film. But we're not talking about that film. No. But Uma Thurman was highly annoying. Yeah, I don't understand what her character was in that. Why was she this person who suddenly, like, as you say, self-aware that he's into this serial killer? Yeah. It's like, why? No one... It, it wasn't natural, that conversation. No. It was forced. It w- and it didn't make sense. Yeah. And... If the whole film had carried on in that style, I don't think we would have made it through two and a half hours of that shit. Mm. I don't know how we made it to it through two and a half hours anyway. We just powered through, man. We had a little break. <laughs> we had a pizza break. We had a toilet break, beer breaks. Every break. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was just a case of it being self-aware and missing the mark on that one. Whereas in the second one, like you said, it was only halfway through the second one once he starts going back into the house to clean up blood spatter and blood spots that you know couldn't have actually been there hmm. that you're like, okay, actually, this is sort of like playing it humorously. And then when he drags that fucking yeah. body... That was brilliant. That's that's probably the most memorable part of the film. It was. Yeah. It's like, okay, it this is like a comedic look at a serial killer yeah. and like almost like a slapstick. Yes. Like he's running, doesn't know whether he's cleaned something up, Run back out, run yeah. back in, doesn't know where he's cleaning this up. And then the whole thing of him dragging the body into the bushes when the policeman comes. Yeah. And then it's shouting at him saying, You better clean you better look for this whole house. Yeah. With a magnifying glass. Yes. yes. It was Why quite, would you say that? I know, I don't know. <laughs> but that was good. I enjoyed that part. And that is that is the part of the film I think why I rated it higher. Those are the parts yeah. I liked. Because it needed to rely more on the black humour. This is it. It needed to rely more on that black humour. But it felt like after that incident, once we got to the third... But wait, this. But still, now I think about it, all the best parts were kind of in that incident. Because then you have the woman with the um, rigor mortis. That's in that same incident. Was it? Yeah. I thought it was incident three. Was it? Yeah, it was incident two, yeah. What was incident three? The, the family. Incident three oh, was yeah. the family. Yeah. Well, yeah, so and it's like, God, that was that was funny. Him taking a, like, 
oh, he's hadn't taken the picture right, let's take him back to the house and he'd take another picture. Runs the woman over on the way because he feels like he needs to kill this woman as the well. The little old lady. Yeah, yeah. the little old lady. Wasn't little or old. Yes. That's all. It's played by like a 40 year old. <laughs> like you could at least cast an old lady for the role, surely. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I quite enjoyed that. What well, about all those little educational scenes in the middle? The guy playing the piano. Yeah, this let's uh let's address the middle sections in between the incidents then before we go on to three. Yeah, yeah. Hated them. That was boring. I don't know it was filler. It worked for about one one bit. There was a moment, I think, in between four and five where it, it was going on for about twenty minutes, it felt like. And it was non stop talking about wine, talking about Oh, yeah. Storing, storing alcohol in barrels. Dive bombers. We yeah, went dive from dessert bombers. wine to dive bombers. We went on fucking the ways you hunt buck. For you young bucks. <laughs> to other nonsense. Like that, the, the young, the hunting deer part, I can understand. It was a, it was a bit more interesting because you know it's the, relating. Yeah. yeah, It's relating to the family and hunting the family down. But the rest of it, it was like boring. And I, I was kind of zoning out for it because I, I wasn't interested. Yeah. It was boring. It was like the only thing that was interesting in those sequences was listening to try and work out who the fuck he was talking to. Because mm. you've got this old Italian grandpa who was talking to him and you're thinking, right, who's this person going to be? And we're all guessing in the room. Some yeah. of us are saying, oh, this is this is the prison warden because he's, he's on death row or something. And some of us are saying, this is death. Some of us were saying, this is the man who's going to kill kill him. He's he, We're going to find out that he's actually killed and we'll get to who he was in the end. And we yeah, don't they were really know. Dropping subtle clues throughout, weren't they? But I don't think they even paid off at the end, really. No. And it it was just too pretentious with all of that. Yeah. Like I could go with him black humor, self-referential, but it was too up its own ass with all that conversation because none of us were fucking interested in what they were talking about. We saw it it wasn't just us free. We saw it with some of Adam's friends in the room, and that was the point where most people were talking. And very distracted because it didn't keep anyone's attention because mm-hmm. it was just random. Half the time the screen was black. Yeah. The screen was black and you just heard the conversation. And when it wasn't black, it was visuals of... Yeah, almost like watching a slideshow. Like you were at a presentation at work or something or some kind of educational slideshow. Yes. And it was not interesting at all. It was almost like how much bullshit can you put the audience through before they have enough? Mm. Clearly two and a half hours of it because we didn't turn off. Yeah, and now we're making a podcast. And now we're making a podcast of it, so it fucking worked, didn't it? It could probably be taken down to about an hour and a half if you just pull that stuff out. Yes. Easily. See, now the third incident jumps forward like 10 years in time. And I still don't know if that was meant to be his wife and two kids or not. Well, well, so how many years at the beginning did you say that? 12. 12. So yeah, so those, considering we went through two... We've gone through two incidents already, and those children were easily twelve and above. They were four if they're a day. No, they were young kids. They were young. They weren't teens. Oh, I don't. Oh, yeah. they Maybe they were like ten. They were nine or four. <laughs> but then you've got to think: if it's only twelve years, it skips forward again another two times. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. If, anyway, he it says matter. at the beginning uh, over the course of this many years. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. But anyway, regardless whether it's his, his wife and kids or whether he, he's joined the family and it's his woman's kids, doesn't really matter. Because no, he shot them. He shot them. <laughs> and he was. this is the part where I was like, okay, come on, show this graphically now. And this segment was probably the least graphic segment, Yeah, I'd say. Because yeah. nothing happened. All you, The only bit you did see was, okay, apart from... When he's he's molding the child into some kind of doll that stands at his, at the door, which like, is pretty cool, looking like the Joker. That was pretty cool and creepy. Yeah, but apart from that, all you saw was when he shot her in the back. Yeah, but you did also see so like you saw him sniping the two kids and the mum. Mm. But every time he took the shot, they cut away from the moment of impact. But then you saw the after effect, mm. and the thing that was kind of disturbing was also like equaled out by the fact that it just didn't make sense. He shot the kid in like the knee, the little kid in the knee, which yeah. is brutal, but you saw the broken leg and then the kid's lying dead on the floor from what is a fucking bullet wound in the leg. Yeah, yeah. Not like hours later bleeding out, like seconds later. 
It's true. He was your size. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> Young man. He was. Bigger than you, actually. If no. I shot you in the leg, you'd die. You're the same <laughs> size as the first second we were in. I'm, Adam, the, I'm the same size as that woman. Adam would die from shock. He would. He almost died from shock from this film. What did you think of this segment? Just, it could have been better. <laughs> I just didn't know what's going on. I it didn't was, know. I, you I could have built up a lot more tension. They could have been. This is the first time you saw him like hunt someone. Like someone's actually in fear. Whereas before, you knew what was happening. They kind of just it just happened. Where it was nothing. You yeah, knew the person no was getting away. Mm. You knew he had them cornered. But this one here, you thinking, oh, there's a little chase going on here, and they just yes fucked around with it but then he, he put them in a, a pretty pose he put he them did. in a pretty pose which I don't know why he did all his crows but I thought it looked all those crows that's why he was talking to you about the deer because yes that's what you got to do with deer the two young bucks and the mother like us yeah. we're two young bucks and our mum <laughs> but the way he laid them all out yeah. with 70 crows was quite delightful I enjoyed that image did you? 70 crows that image and the her being dragged along the floor by the back of the car were the two images that stuck in my head from the film. Yeah, because I don't it, know why. It, cor- it, well, it correlated to the middle sections when they were talking about the hunting again. Yeah, when the, they used to come home and they used to lay out all the animals, different types of animals they got. I did, I missed that. That bit went over my head. Yeah, it must have been Adam's friends talking over that bit. Yeah, they, that's what that's basically what they said when they go for the hunting season and they're culling all the animals. They lay all the individual animal animals out in like. Rows to show what they've all the kill they got. He caught many crows. Mm. Many crows, three humans. <laughs> the crows would have been harder though. Yeah, fucking the, the humans around. were easy pickings. The crows, fucking hell. Those kids would have run out. They weren't even trying to hide. No, <laughs> he would have took plenty of full metal jackets out there for the crows. <laughs> anyway, so they all died. Yes. What was number four? Oh, the breast lady. You tell us. The breast lady, and he drawn her breast. That was a very, very weird, weird scene of events. Very drawn out. Very drawn out. That Too could have been out. about... It's like Buster Scruggs. It could have been about five minutes and it went on for probably about 20 minutes, half hour. Mm. Mm. Before uh, anything happened. He just put a breast on the window screen. Did he actually do anything else? That's all that happened. That was significant. Yeah. No, not really. He cut her breast off and put it on a window screen. And then they went out talking to the policeman and then he didn't believe them. Yes. I guess this was to show how... How like bold he was being now, and he didn't even care. He was just shouting out in the street. Yeah, he just didn't care that he was a serial killer, and it's almost like, like, did he want to get caught? Do you know when he spoke about when he was a kid? We haven't spoken about when he was a kid. Um, no, because nothing, nothing really resonated for me when he was a the, fucking the kid. duckling. Oh yeah. Well, yes. And the fucking people swinging there. Well, Sorry, this kind, this kind of goes to what I'm, I'm about to say anyway. But the, let's talk about the duckling quickly. Mm. Uh, a lot of people spoke about this duckling scene about how they're distressed about it to be honest it was really easy to pull off by putting a fake leg and cutting it because the duckling didn't even look distressed so it didn't make me distressed at all no if the duckling had even like flapped its wings yeah it could have been made believable but the duckling fucking sat there happy as Larry as it leg got pulled off you can't make a duckling act because it's a duckling no but all you need to do is hold a duckling in your hand and give it a little tickle and then it's going to sort of go oi and, and that reaction is enough yeah, yeah, when you yeah, chop a leg off you know that don't you I do. so I that is a badly duck act- duck they should have got Howard <laughs> yeah, Howard the duck, the duck from the ATC. he would have sorted it out but yeah and then basically I'm going back to the kid because it spoke about him running through the fields when he's hiding he said whenever I play hide and seek I always like to run through the fields and then the, the Italian guy says about him leaving a pathway yeah. so people can find him all right and it's mm. the same thing about the blood when he's when he's got the 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 thing of blood leaning all the way back to his place and he says were you annoyed when the rain came interesting because he wants to get caught and that's the same thing about now when he's shouting in the street because basically he does he doesn't really care and he doesn't mind if he gets caught he's basically just flaunting it saying i have killed f- so how many 61 was 60, it 60 or is it 51 60 it was 60 she was I 61st i killed 60 people and he's like, he don't care anymore because he knows that nobody's catching him. Yes. Because nobody in the area seems to care when people go missing. And that's just true, man. And, um, yeah. So that was that segment. Apart from that, I didn't get anything from that segment. It was long, drawn out. Yeah. And boring. It was yeah, fucking boring. boring. And, and, that, and she was now, really annoying. And now showing the breasts, we thought it was, was going to be a, a good enough reason. 
But I think it was just a showy. Let me just show you some breasts now. Let's show this some what breasts. people want to show. So I don't think it was it was worth worth the storytelling. It wasn't because it wasn't and there was no storytelling involved. They just showed some breasts and drew some pen around them. That's right. And then before it goes to incident five, there's a really fucking weird moment where it goes into one of these pretentious things again for twenty minutes, and we see. Shots from all of Lars von Trier's previous films. We see shots from Antichrist. Oh, yeah. We see shots from Nymphomaniac, from Dogville, some of the others that I haven't seen, I assume. And I can't even remember what the conversation was that he was having with the Italian man when we were seeing all of it. But clearly at this point, it's like Lars von Trier is just so up his fucking own ass by this point. He's basically saying that he is Jack. That's the way I took it. Mm. He's using Jack as a as a he's metaphor got, for him. Well, he's got away in murder for so long. Yeah, well, sort of like... In in like the, the the way that people are watching and judging and talking about Jack and seeing what Jack's doing these horrendous things, he's saying, "Here's all my films. Here's all my works of art, which I've been doing up to this point, which you could say the same shit about, or what people have said the same shit about, because he's so criticised and booed, and considered controversy. Mm. Controversy. controversy. <laughs> he's considered controversy. It's the observatory. <laughs> yeah. And then the fifth incident. Well, I don't know how to explain it. The fifth one kind of got interesting again with the shooting people, shooting how many, five people through the head? Yeah. yeah. It kind of got, it kind of brought it back to that kind of comedy, kind of wacky serial killer. It made me think of Saw. It was a Saw type scenario. That whole thing with the man in the caravan was bullshit. It came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. We're supposed to feel sorry for this man who is his best friend, who we've never seen before in his life, trying to feel. An emotional connection with him, but we didn't. Looking like a saw man with a with a red riding hood gown on, and then he avoids being killed by the police when they turn up to the caravan because Jack dresses up in the red fucking dressing gown. Like, why would the police even know this man wore a red dressing gown? He was just chilling in the caravan. He around the, the street in that dressing gown. <laughs> yeah, he never takes it off. And whenever they see it, they go, "Oh, that's that caravan man." So, <laughs> and then Jack just standing there with his back to the door in it. Fuck off. Why did he just shoot him as soon as he walked in? I know. Should have just at least laid him there. Turn around, sir. <laughs> That's all we need to say. Turn around. Did he kill him? I can't remember. Yeah, oh, he yeah, shot yeah, him. Shot, yeah. Yeah. shot him to death. Yeah, so so that bit was stupid. And then, so the, through the whole film, there's a door that you can never open. And then yeah. he finally opens it. And it's a bit like, ooh, this could be a good reveal now. And we did jokingly say, I bet it's the man who's been talking all along. Yeah. And it was the man who's been talking it all along. It was the little Italian man. Who actually, we now know... It wasn't fucking Italian at all. It was actually German, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So he played Hitler in Downfall, as we realised while we were watching it. And that's this is when the film got a bit... Weird. Weird. Like, if anything... Even weirder than it was before. It was weird, but if anything, it was probably the most interesting... Interesting. I'm not saying it's good, but interesting part of the film is the whole experience he had with that guy at the end. Because it was so... The whole fucking film, I keep saying it, but it was so self-referential. The fact that we'd seen loads of Hitler footage before this point, it was significant that they'd hidden the identity of the man who was this voice up until that point. And then when it's revealed, we're saying, we know this guy, we know this guy, and had to IMDB it to see that it was the actor who played Hitler in Downfall. That's significant because that, I'm sure, is what that actor is best known for. Yeah, 100%. So he picked him specifically for that reason. Mm. So there's a, a message there. And it must be about evil. And it was just before, it was just before where it's shown all the dictators, showing Stalin, showing yeah. Hitler. A lot of Hitler. And it's like almost building you up for that reveal. Mm. Very, very strangely. And then they go on a winter wonderland walk through yeah, hell. Yeah, then some floating some floating in some bubbles. Floating in bubbles and balls and rolling down caverns and <laughs> liquid, lots of liquid water. So the way I saw it was, was when when he built his lovely house that we soon realised the Jack, the house the that house Jack, Jack built, built which was a house out of bodies lovely yeah in his little new cooling room yes I don't know how how he built it so quickly when the police were just trying to get in <laughs> just outside the door yeah but, I think um, maybe we're meant to think that he didn't actually build it yeah 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 so because we saw a lot of shit that didn't yeah, really happen because they cut through the door and then there was shooting and then that was the bullets for the police <laughs> <laughs> And they were shooting, and then I took it that obviously Jack got shot. Then, and then this is his right, thing yeah, to hell. Yeah, him going yeah. to hell now. 
Yes. On the journey to hell, yes. Yeah. Which we kind of we kind of guess, which we said that he's obviously on his journey to hell. Yeah. And this is I said we or we were saying the Grim Reaper, but somebody like the almost like the, the, the ferryman Reaper. the ferryman taking him <clears throat> to hell. Which had never paid a ferryman. No. And he didn't. Never pay him. Don't we even bust the scrugs. Don't even fix the price, that's true. Now I, I've got something to say. Okay. The final image of the film, mm-hmm. I think it was, when he's down in hell with the man, Ver- Vertigo, that Virgil, yeah. is there a bridge over the boiling lava. Yep. And the man says, this is hell, and now we're going to go back. And then Jack says, what's over the other side? And you see the other side of the bridge, there's a stairwell, and the man says, that goes up, so presumably to heaven. And Jack says, well, I'm going to try and get over there. And the man says, no, people have tried, no one's ever made it. And then we watch for about five minutes as Jack tries to crawl along this wall to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. And then inevitably he falls down into hell. But when you're watching him crawling along that wall, apart from the fact that we've just watched this fucking film for two and a half hours and we just want it to be over, I think the way that it's filmed is Lars von Trier is is hoping that, is, is making you hope that he makes it to the other side. Did you hope he made it to the other yeah. side? I didn't really care, to be honest, at this point. I was trying to film I know, because you wanted to film to win, but imagine you'd only been watching it for five minutes. Mm. Adam, you rated this film quite high for someone who really hated it. I know, you give it a six. It was good, but it was so bad at the same time. <laughs> you got the red I eyes, feel, son. You I got the red like, eyes. Yeah, I feel like if someone, <laughs> if I watched it by myself, I would have hated every moment of it. You would have loved it. You'd have been masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> masturbating? Because, because, honestly... Think about it now. When he's crawling that wall, it's drawn out for such a long time. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, listen. Because when he's when he's going along that wall, you kind of want him to make it to the other side because you want to see what's mm. beyond. I don't think I ever cared at any point. Well, then he then I can't I make ca- my I point. I cared. I cared. I thought he was going to make it. Did you want him to make it? And your point is, Ben. Well, there's my point, Paul. Thank you for asking. Is if you it's Lars von Trier saying if you're hoping he makes it to the other side. After you've watched two and a half hours of him being hellish manish and killing all these people, what does that say about you? And you want to call me a, a monster filmmaker who does this horrible shit? Yes, you're easily manipulated. You're easily manipulated and you want to see him go to heaven. So what does it say about you, the audience member? Fuck you. It's true. True. I also thought for a long while that that German slash Italian man who was talking to him was meant to be the voice of the audience over the years who was sort of saying to him, oh, you've done this, you've done that. Hmm. I also thought that he was going to be Lars von Trier himself, and this was going to be a very up my own, up my own ass Lars von Trier move, where he's talking to his own character in his own film. It was a very up my ass film. Yeah, but I got to say, in hindsight, I appreciate it. I don't think I will ever watch it again because it was an ordeal. Same. It was a fucking ordeal, but I thought it was good, generally speaking. I thought it was entertaining. See, I've never felt entertained. No, never I thought felt it, I felt entertained. You you got to say you felt entertained during that second segment. That was entertaining. Him going back and forward. Mm. I was kind of I I I, I thought it was funny. Mm. I was only truly entertained in that last twenty minutes, thirty minutes, where I was like, "All right, I want to see where this is going now." I wanted it to end, but I was yeah. like, "I I'm fo- I want to see where this is going." Whereas the rest of it, I thought, "Fuck, we're just gonna watch hours of him just." It's all you, you like it that like there's almost like some philosophical ending yes. for him rather than just he's methodically going around killing people for no reason That's and true. then he gets shot by the police at the end. You like there's some kind yeah. of purpose at the end. Yes. That's I nice. don't think he'll ever make another film again. Lars? It felt like a final film to really? me. Mm. That's what it felt like. I think that was like, bye. That's what it felt like. That's why he was showing his films in the... Especially because he showed his films. Mm. I thought, That's it. He's done. No, the, the, there is some probably deeper meaning in each segment. It's something to do with his his life, and him, and how how his life got fucked up or something, or people fucking him over in his life. It's something to do with that in each segment. I'm pretty sure it'd be something like that. You may, he it, Jack, yeah. He let the insurance man in. <laughs> yes, the double pension, and he killed him. <laughs> You're right, man. He's so red eyed. He even said he let the insurance man in. It was a she. It was definitely no, a fucking she. He did in that scene. That was him in real life. Oh, yes. Oh, this is very fucking prophetic. Why are your eyes so red? You've been smoking the gun. You've been smoking spliffs. Have you? Sleepy. 
Did you partake when we were out the room? Yes. Oh, yeah, because you got up so early today, didn't you're you? That's right, why. You got up what time? Five. Fuck me, of course you're tired. Yeah. You want to lay your head down? Yeah, I'll have a little nap. You finish off the podcast. You didn't say anything. You had nothing to say. You were saying the same thing. I hate it. I don't know what to I'm think about it. Finish. I don't know what to think. I, I don't know. What to think. I don't know what to think. I've been up since five. I'm going to work. <laughs> That's Adam's contribution to this podcast. I don't know what's going on. I'm sitting here. It's, I'm my, more it's my house, but I don't know what to say. I'm more confused doing this than I am watching the film. Adam, it's been a pleasure to watch this film in your company. It really has, because the last film we all watched together was Tomb Raider, which was such a pile of shit. Like, different shit. People will say, or Adam will say, that film was boring, or boring, didn't know what to make of it, but i tell you this much for free. You'll be fucking thinking about that film for years to come. I will, but if you said to me, what would you rather watch now, Tomb Raider or that, I'll pick Tomb Raider. Yeah, because you're tired and you think, oh, you don't got to think about it. Of course, I would probably say, if we were going to fall asleep right now, and you say, you got one, two films to put on, I would say put Tomb Raider on and I hated it. No, if you're just normal awake film, you have to watch one again, i still pick Tomb Raider. Yeah. It went on for too long. At this point, at this point, because I wouldn't watch the same fucking film twice, but... Okay, I'll give you two years down the line. The point is, in two years, like now, here we are seven months after Tomb Raider, the only things we remember from it are a couple of joke moments that we found funny, but found funny after the fact. Yeah. We made them funny ourselves. Yeah, I agree with you, Ben. At least at least this film had a bit of substance, and it was it was trying to do something different, and it's, it's something that you've never seen before, where Tomb Raider is something you see every day. In every film. Yeah. So, but they're they're yeah. different genres, so that's fine. If you were to rank this alongside like for like films, this is a final word, because Adam's going to sleep, what would you compare it to? Nothing. I don't want to compare it to anything. So, your friend Alex yep. said to me that, <clears throat> I said to him, what film would you compare it to? Because he was saying that he liked films that were exploring the darkness and depravity of the human mind, but ones that, that did it in a in a more substantial way. And I said, like, what? And the first film he said was Martyrs. And at first I thought, that's not a good comparison. But actually it is. Because it's that whole thing of death and exploring the sort of the, the mindset around curiosity, around death. And that fucking was brilliant. By comparison, it knocked us out of the water. Yeah. And effortless, so- effortlessly... Whereas it felt like Von Trier put fucking effort into trying to make this yeah. good. It didn't feel natural. Yeah. And Martyrs was very, very natural and very fucking good. Good film. He also said a film which I haven't seen called Raw, which I don't know if you've seen. I've seen Raw. That yeah. That one too. <clears throat> mm, Martyrs is better. I've never seen Martyrs. Very, very, very uh, not nice. Mm. Not them. Very graphic. They don't shy away from the graphic nature of everything. No. Quite brilliant. That first scene, absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> I can't remember the first the scene. The first scene is when she comes into the house with the family. I can't remember. All you see is her coming and shooting everyone. I can't remember that at all. I really, really remember It's a family all sitting around the table. Okay. Just having dinner. Yeah. She comes in, shoots them all with shotguns. Okay. I don't remember it too tough. And the kids are running around the house and she's shooting them. Sounds delightful. Mm. Yes. I'll give it a Good watch. film. Anyway, that was our House That Jack Built review. So, in summary, one word to describe the House That Jack Built. I will say interesting. Confusing. Pretentious. But I still give it a seven. I think that is the perfect... We just gave the perfect description of that film. An interesting, confusing, Confusing, pretentious pretentious film. film. Yeah, it's true. And that's what we should do for every film from now on and see if that actually summarises every film. film. Mm. Here's a test, just one test. How would you describe John Wick in three... One word each. John Wick. The first one. Fast-paced. Action. Thrilling. So that worked. Let's do something a bit different. How would you describe Memento in one word? Confusing. I would say unique. Intriguing. The perfect, perfect, confusing. If I heard that, it's a confusing, unique, intriguing film. Fucking, I'll take tickets. <laughs> That's how they should market films. Just asking us for our one word review mm-hmm. and put that instead of We're the dead title. We're for hundred quid. One last film. Pick a film. Train spoiling. 
Dirty. Edgy fun. Dirty, edgy fun. It fucking works. <laughs> it really works. Anyway, that was your Film Busters review brought to you by the free, free, free Film Busters. Yes. And we do this for free. Normally you have to pay for this. Yeah, you got it all for free. <laughs> so if you want to get in touch with us, ask any questions or send us any letters, you can get in touch with us at Film Busters Pod on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. And we also have our email address, which is, which is filmbusters at outlook.com. We also have individual Twitter accounts, which we also use regularly. I am at Filmbusters Paul. I am at Filmbusters Ben. And I'm at Filmbusters Adam. Yeah, so we're actually very active on there. So if you want to talk to us or ask any crazy questions about the films or any any podcast you've just listened ask to. Ask us any wacky questions you yeah, want. Only wacky want questions. We only want wacky we questions. We love wacky. Only wacky questions for wacky the podcast. Wacky and Phoenix questions. Good. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, only wacky and Phoenix questions, actually. It's good. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. We've been film busters. We've been film busters. Thanks a lot. Ow. Ew, bastard.